everybody. It's Henry. And more is followers. So it's the next day. As you know from yesterday's episode, I rebuilt this deck that I got through a trade from my friend Nick from West Iceland. We repainted it. I put a tension arm on the pulley brake. We uh, placed a new pulley, pulley shaft, spindle onto this part and uh, added a post for the tension brake arm spring return and we added another spring on this one here. So this one looks like it's everything's in order. Brake releases both pulleys when it's uh, engaged and when it's disengaged it stops the pulley. So I noticed something else that was missing as I was looking at the old deck that it doesn't have a guard for this pulley uh, on the Craftsman LT1000s and that family there's only one guard and it's on the left one if you're looking forward and that protects your feet from when you're getting onto the tractor from the pulley spinning and all if you were on the uh, tractor uh, about a year ago uh, taking apart trash LT1000s and throwing away rotted decks. It was always difficult to get the guard off, but I always made it an extra effort to try to get the guard off because I knew one day I would need them. And sure enough, when I saw that this was missing the guard, I went to my back uh, box of parts and I found one. So I'm going to uh, put the belt on today, put this guard on, remove the old deck from this tractor, compare the two, and then put this one back on. So first I'm gonna put the belt on. I have about three or four of the uh, belts for these Craftsman LT1000 decks, the 42 ones, and uh, I hope it's the right size. They're relatively easy to remove and take off anyway, but before I put this guard on, it makes it easier to put the belt on when you have it off. So uh, this one, it's a little worn, but it's the best condition one I have, and it'll hold up for sure. But it could use a change. So it's easy to even figure it out without even looking at a diagram, because these are V pulleys, whereas the shape of it accommodates the V part of the belt. These are called flat idlers, right? Idler pulleys, where they're flat, not V-shaped. So you know it goes for the, to the back of the uh, belt. So first we're going to um, place the uh, V portions over the two main blade pulleys, right? So it sticks out like that. And then this is designed to run around the flat part. It goes over the belt keepers here. Very straightforward. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at it going, wait a minute, is that right? <laughs> well, I think that's right. Does that look right to you guys? I think that looks right. So when you engage the PTO, this, this goes around the double stack pulley in the crankshaft, right? And then when you engage the PTO, the lever releases the brake from the pulley and causes the belt to be tensioned. Thus making tension on the belt while it's turning and spinning both blades. So it looks like it's correct. Now we're gonna install this pulley guard. Let me find some bolts for this. There we go. Looks like this deck is now complete and ready to be installed. This reconditioned deck 
has been painted, added a new spindle assembly, blade, pulley, belt, post for the spring, arm for the brake, pulley cover for the entire deck. All we're missing is that second front hanger rod, but I'll just take the one off of that tractor and then we'll have a missing rod for the next tractor, but I'm sure I'll come up with one by the time I'm ready to work on that project. Now let's remove the deck off of that one. Take this outside where we have more room. So all you usually need to take off a Craftsman LT1000 family deck, 42 inch or 38, it's pretty easy. It's about six connections. You need a lot of R clips. So I've got some R clips here. I could just take them from the existing one right here, but sometimes you'll need some channel locks or pliers or needle nose and a flathead screwdriver. I'm gonna show you all the points that you disconnect to remove the mower deck. First, I'm gonna lower the deck. You can see everything. Since we're going to be using the hangers for this machine, we'll disconnect it on this side. If you wanted to keep these hangers on the deck, you would remove the front part. But because we're going to keep this on here, we're just going to try to make it easier and just remove this one. That one comes right off, has a little washer there. That's one connection right there. We'll do the other side. You could remove this one back there, but you could just remove this one if you want to keep the hangers on there. So we'll remove this middle one over here. You have your choices. It's especially hard when it's pulled out. Fingers are freezing. It'll move. Now on the left side, you have the ZZ Top rear hanger bar, and it's only on the left side. There's not one on the right side, but there's more stuff on the left side. There you go, that's another one. Now we'll go on the other side where there's a cable. Just pried this part off. And now, disconnect the um, lower deck belt from the front double stack pulley. On the right side of it, and we're moving the middle part. And kind of pry it this way. Take the corner of that hanger. I know it's it seems difficult because like that you got this little pin that's hold holding the uh, spring you remove that little spr uh, pin there so that the spring can come off it's a washer on top of it Then you can remove the spring off of this pulley. And that pulley is the tensioner arm. Spring is connected on the cable where you would remove this. And pull that out. Just use a wrench and kind of jar it out. Henry, you said it was easy. Kind of easy, but it's harder when it's cold. Either way, you said it's easy. Okay, it's easier in the summer. How's that?
it's also harder when you have to record it. <laughs> the camera's right in my way. Come on, man. Freaking come out. What is holding that in there? like everything's disconnected let's remove the deck now i have a spring here that pulls it back because it only ran well when it had that spring now let's put this so the hangers go up Here is the deck. Let me show you the condition of this deck and why I wanted to replace it. Uh, because this tractor is pretty nice, you know. Uh, you have a mindset of getting a certain amount for this. Um, but then it diminishes the price if you have this deck, which is basically the entire reason why you would get a tractor is to mow with it right <laughs> and if this doesn't have a good mowing system this tractor can be nice and red and shiny all you want so like i said this deck i got from larry and bobby a while back it was swiss cheese so i welded a plate that covered most of the swiss cheese but as you can see here still has some there and then there's a gap there and then this lip over here is all uh, you know, Swiss cheesed out and rotted, whereas this part here is completely missing. There's not even a lip there, you know. So uh, I don't know if I could really salvage this. I mean, it would, it would. I mean, it would. It works, you know what I mean. But there are holes in it too, in different parts of it. See what I'm saying? That's why I call it Swiss cheese because there's holes in it. The rest of it is okay, actually. So not a whole lot of work, but some welding here and there. I mean, this part is underneath the tractor, so you can't even see it. If you lift the deflector, you'll see this part is all rotted out. So I could use some sheet metal and practice welding with it. <laughs> um, I don't remember what that's for or why it's just sitting there extra parts I'm gonna give you a comparison to the old one on the bottom and the one that we just rebuilt so it differs a little bit uh, one thing is this the reason why that last spring I took off was on here was because it didn't have a slit over here to bring the tensioner arm back again it has a hole here where I could put a, a spring but it usually has a slit over here where you would connect that spring Whereas I just put it here and then connect it to the frame somehow to have it return. That's what that last spring was for. As you can see here, this one doesn't have the posts that connect here that stick up to attach a spring there. It has these round springs that are uh, encompassed in the arm itself. So that gives it the tension to, to uh, spring back. that see as you can see this one has posts which I fabricated on there to uh, return the arms back the brake arms but all in all it is the same deck
so there we go our newly rebuilt deck is now installed on the tractor that I wanted to fix now this tractor can sell for much better money because the deck is in good shape everything seems to be in order it raises evenly on both sides at the same time and with a good height too when it lowers to the most lowest level nice and low you engage the PTO works as it should and creates good tension for the belt that's onto the crankshaft when you disengage it springs back as it should here's a better view of it I'm engaging the PTO the cable pulls back the tensioner arm creates tension and then when you disengage it the spring pulls it back the tensioner arm moves forward and allows the tension to be slack so therefore it won't engage and it'll just spin without touching the belt. Engage it again. Tension, right to move, disengage, and it springs back by itself, creating slack. So that's basically how it works. Not too many connections. The tricky part is the cable attachment to the tensioner arm aligning it so that everything pops into the holes and that's how you install an LT1000 Craftsman deck mailbag this is the air filter base that I got from my steel BG55 I had to buy it because <laughs> Nick couldn't find the part. When he takes apart stuff, he never puts it back together or keeps it anywhere. He just throws it all over the place. And then he throws it away in his garbage. So I had to spend, and I was lucky, to find one for $10 used. The new ones cost like 20. So if you think I'm gonna pay $20 for an air filter base for an $80 leaf blower your nuts so ten dollars i'll spend ten dollars i also spent about twelve dollars for a new carburetor that carburetor set came with the grommet with the fuel lines and stuff came with a fuel filter came with a fuel uh an air filter too so it came with a lot of stuff along with the carburetor so i paid about 12 bucks for that uh so i'm i'm in this steel BG55 for at least $25 already. I hope it works. Because if you ask me if I would go on Craigslist or anywhere to buy this for $25, I probably wouldn't. Probably find them on the street. There you go. Fully functional air filter base. So I can't install this yet. yet. I have to wait for the carburetor. And I'm only taking Nick for his word because it has a carburetor. But he just says that it's so worn out that you can't even adjust a fuel mixture screws you know so you know i'll buy a new one and also i think the fuel lines are bad on that too anyway and this model it comes with this like aqua green grommet with the attached fuel lines on them in one piece you know and so if one's broken i feel better if i got the real the same kind you know as opposed to routing separate wires through a different kind of grommet you know and here we go this is the eighth part session of this uh of this this sulfator project i'm doing with this battery so um this has now been trickle charging and desulfating for another three days i'm going to remove it from charging and uh we'll let it sit for another day just to see how long it holds its charge for removing the pulsing as you can see over the time it's built up some corrosion here you know so we'll uh we'll check this out in a day or two and see how much um voltage this thing holds 
without being on a trickle charge. You know, this. Let's just try and see what it what it looks like here. It should be like um, 12.9, 13, something like that. <laughs> it says 12.3. That's not good. I mean, it just came off a charger. Why is it 12.3, you know? That's terrible. So, you know what, guys? I mean, I don't think this is gonna work. You know, I think this battery's dunsky, but I'm not gonna give it a big dunsky yet. I'm gonna wait in a day and see if that 12.3 goes down to like eight or something, you know, and then, then you know it's dunsky. But if it maintains 12 something, it might have some hope. Maybe I'll try some purified water, distilled water in there, you know? So that was fun, huh? I'm gonna put this rotted deck on another project moving forward. I have another Crossman LT1000. It's a carcass of crap. It needs an engine and a deck. Also needs a ton of work because it's really rusty. But it's a project and let's just find out how much better we can get it to look after I'm done with it. Uh, moving forward in the near future, I'm gonna try to fix this deck up a little bit. Try to practice my welding on the Swiss cheese holes. See what I can come up with and what the end result will be. Um, and then we can prepare to put this one onto that carcass of crap project, right? But uh, my project with this one's over. Uh, this is now ready to sell because the tractor itself starts and runs great. And then when it gets warmer and I, you know, summarize this again by putting gas in it. Right now it's winterized for the winter. And we're not quite done with winter yet. So uh, I'm gonna park this back into the backyard with its new deck. And I'm gonna hold on to this deck for a future project. But uh, that has been my two-part series on uh, how to rebuild, refurbish, recondition a, a deck that was in some, that needed some parts and needed to be assembled. Remove the old Swiss cheese rotted deck. Put the new one back on. Uh, took me three or four days actually, different parts because we had bad weather. But I hope you guys enjoyed my uh, small little project here of getting yet another tractor ready for sale for the spring. Thanks a lot for joining me on today's episode. We'll see you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. mowers and blowers we push them into the garage but they come out driving see you next time on mowers and blowers the island of Puerto Rico hey if you guys enjoyed the video remember to give me a like also comment below subscribe remember it doesn't cost anything to subscribe it's free right also Hit that little bell. That way you'll get post notifications whenever there's a new video and you won't miss out on any of them. Remember to follow my Instagram and Facebook as well as if you'd like to donate a dollar or two, paypal.me slash mowers and blowers. Really appreciate all the support. Also, to keep the videos coming every day, support the channel. Bye.